down. All right. So, so the blue printer, obviously it came out, it made a big splash. Um, I think it blew our competition away <laughs> and I can say that cause I'm the blue coach, <laughs> but, um, one of the things that is really impressive about the, the blue printer is you are not limited to shapes or to one thing on the printer. So this actually, these cookies, we actually printed and we brought them in for the show. Uh, and this was the Austin show. And these cookies, I, and the reason I, I pulled these out April. is I wanted you to see how good they still look. And they're hard as a rock because they've been sitting. These were our sample cookies. But these are from that show. And I like, you to, like to see the detail on them and the wording and things like that. And also the precision that we can match on the blue printer to shapes. And we can print all of these shapes at one time. We don't have to print one at a time. We could print the whole bed full. Now, I just want you guys to notice that it only prints backwards, like shown in the picture. Well, yeah. Well, let me see if I'm I can kidding. switch that. Let me see if I can switch that. What's that? That was is kind that of my. Now, does that now look yes. right? Yes. No, yes. And you are kind of yeah, yeah, It does look right. OK. Hey, pull the right side of your mat down towards you a little bit. There you go. A little bit more. It's just cockeyed and it's bothering me. Uh -huh. Is that better? That, that's, that's better. Yes, okay. very good. Cockeyed okay, on the better. thing, but it's right there. Okay, so, you know, I want you to notice this because also the other thing I want you to notice on this is the ink because this, like I said, is older and it's been, it's been from, when was the Austin show? That was... End of April. End of April. So these have been around since April, just kind of hanging out. Um, so there's kind of an example. Here's some other examples of what the blue printer can do. It can also print these muted shades that, you know, Deb doesn't like the muted shades as much, but we get requests for these. And this was another set that we did. And this yes, is so I'm nice. a very bright color person. I like bright in yep. your face colors. Yep, she does. Everybody's I bug people but uh, what I like about this is it shows the very fine lines and things you can print, you know, and it's just amazing to me. But then as people started, you know, working and talking about the cookies and things like that and printing, they said, well, you know, we just don't want to print on a cookie and it looked like that, you know, that's good, but can we make it better? And we said, well, yes, you can. And by taking that same cookie and over piping the letters with black, see, we got a little dimension on there. And you can kind of see the dimension if I turn it to the side. And so what we're finding now is we're printing on the cookies and then to jizz them up a little bit, we're adding some embellishments, which I think that's really cool. And we've seen a lot of that with our blue owners um, as they're doing their sets of cookies now. They'll print some and then they'll take some and they'll add some accents and things to them. Awesome. So that's kind of cool things that we did with the blue. Hey, but do you that, have anything more recent that you printed? Uh, yes, I do. Are you going to show that? Yes. At I some do. point. So then the other thing that um, we talked about with the blue printer is paint your owns. Okay. So this is a paint your own cookie. This was just printed a few days ago. Um, and when we talked about the paint your owns, if you if you're in a cookier and you know about paint your owns, normally we would take and scrape these with royal icing, and then when you get them wet, the royal icing just turns into a big black black blob. All it you know, so the kids are painting and it just becomes black, and it's not as fun. But what we found with the blue printer is if you print the paint your own with the blue printer. And then you um, use your edible markers or your paint. And we're going to talk about how you do your paint, your edible paint. Um, you do not smear the black. It takes a long, long time before it saturates. It's enough that the black starts smearing, which I think that's really, really cool. So, so that doesn't happen. With yeah, the it does happen. And with the royal icing, it does happen. So then one of the cool things that Heather showed us, and I just was fascinated with this because I'd never thought of this idea, is she takes a piece of acetate 
And we all know to save our backings on our icing sheets or all of our other sheets that have backing or acetate on there. And she takes the food doodler markers, food doodler markers. And what she does is when she wants to make paint, instead of using the markers on there, she actually colors on the acetate. So let me get some colors on my acetate because I thought this was so cool like this, because I had never done this before. I thought, well, I'm really missing out here. So while you're doing this, Blake has a very good question. Yep. So you can do PYO dots so they can put paint right there on it? Yes, we could. We could do Woohoo! Yeah. Now let me get a, I'm gonna get a, oh, I don't even have a small paintbrush. Well, I'm gonna use a large paintbrush. Lori's really prepared. Mm -hmm. Let me go grab a small paintbrush. Lori has had a huge 24 hours <laughs> and she still got this done. So I couldn't even begin to describe everything and I won't. Um, but she has had a heck of a 24 hours. Yeah, <laughs> it, was a, it was a really interesting last night. Ooh, howdy. Yes. Um, so you take your markers and we take our paper potion yeah paper, paper potion. potion so we got our food doodler markers that you can get at icing images and we have our paper potion and we're just going to squirt it right on our marker that i made marks on there and now i have paint look at that i have paint and now i can paint my little paint your own how cool is that so you can create paint with your edible markers. You can use edible paint. You can use markers, just straight markers yep. if you and want. Then, wow, that covers it well. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I, that's why I, I wanted to show that. Let me show you some red. Let me, let me make his nose. I'll make the candy cane some red. But look how, you know, look how that does. Candy cane red. This is great. Um, yeah, and, and Heather showed us how to do that. And I had never thought of using the markers with the paper potion to make paint, you know? I mean... So, theoretically, if they're doing a PYO party, you could actually give them a set of... One set of markers, a couple sheets uh, of the acetate cut up. You could actually cut up from the acetate, yep. That's why they I can thinking. create their own palettes. Or you could even do that. You could prepare it ahead of time is you can, mm -hmm. because you can, I'm not going to lie. You can use the edible markers to paint on these. I mean like this, yeah. but the problem is, is when the little kids press too hard, it will go through the Royal icing. Okay? Yes. It, so we, we see that happen and we've done a lot of, we just did a, a neighborhood um, HOA association had their Christmas party and we did 500 paint your own cookies for the kids to color while they were waiting for Santa. So they all got a cookie and could color their cookie. And then they got to have their picture of Santa. And we had the markers out. And afterwards, I thought, well, that was a really dumb thing to do. I should have used this technique and taken the acetate and cut it and, you know, had the markers pre-colored, you know, just spots on there with some little paint brushes and let them paint. I didn't do that. But I was I wish I would have done that. I would do that again. It's okay. But, that's why we have these lives so you can learn. I know. So what do you think about it? So that's one way to <laughs> do it. But then the other thing that is was introduced, and it was introduced with the blue printer, is by Susan Trianos. Wait, I have to say something. Wait, hold that, hold that. Hold that, hold that. Becky Norton has printed three thousand PYO cookies for this season so far. Yep, yep. yes. Right. I had to We've been commiserating printing PYO cookies together. <laughs> We've been printing a lot of cookies too. Okay. Um, okay. So the other thing that was introduced by Susan Trianos is actually using a smart sheet and printing it as a backer paper for your box. And this is a smart sheet printed on the blue printer and then you take your paintbrush and you just dip it in water and dot on the colors. And it could be any kind of background. It doesn't have to be a polka dot background. The one background we had um, at the show, she did sandcastles. 
and it was the sandcastles and little crabs and things like that were the colors that she wanted the mermaid to be painted. And this is her mermaid design. So if you'd like this mermaid to paint your own design and a cookie cutter, you could get it from Susan Trianos because um, she has it. Yep, but, and I will put the link up there for you guys. Yep. And she has the cutter and she has the mermaid uh, paint your own, the, the uh, JPEG for it that you need. So you could print all that. But the thing I thought is really cool about this is you don't have to do just a palette. Um, you could paint back, print the backer paper, and then you can use that as your palette. So it makes the box look nicer, and um, it also is useful. Now, isn't so, this cookie from April as well? Or this is, is from Orlando. Cookie? This is from Orlando. Okay, so that was- And it's been through all... a lot. It's, it's been through a lot. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, it's kind of hard. cracked in the middle now. It's been through a lot. Um, we saved it as an example because we liked it so much and we carried it to all the shows this year. <laughs> wow. I know. Yeah, that's but it, I mean, this is, I mean, this is cool, you know, and the smart sheets printing them on the blue printer or even a regular edible printer, um, especially when we, you know, as we're thinking about the new inks and stuff you came out with, Deb, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't hesitate to say that you could do the same thing with an edible paper printer print it with your uh smart sheet and then cut it up for your backer paper okay so why so smart sheets i'm going to put the link up there as well so you yes. can use your regular printer with that yeah to create the same thing because renee had asked that earlier yep you could use it now let's talk about the smart sheet so this is a smart sheet and even though you and i think it's older it's still people are discovering it. So yes, the smart sheet is a product we all use. Um, we love it. We love it. So I'm the one that coined it as tattoo for cakes. And the reason I say it's a tattoo for cakes is because when you ap apply it to your buttercream, it just kind of melds in like those edible or those um, removable tattoos that kids put on their hands. That's what it reminds me of when I put it on a buttercream cake. It just kind of melds into it. And it looks like a cake tattoo. So that's what I call it. So it has a textured side. And I'm, I'm going to bring it up close. This textured side feels like watercolor paper. And then it has a smooth side. And the smooth side is very smooth. It's kind of shiny. And, you know, we talk about the difference in these a lot. And the last live that we just did with Stacy Barr, um, he was comparing the differences in the paper in how it printed. So if you haven't watched that live, I highly suggest you watch. It was just last week and it is available on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube page and also on Stacy's page. He's got a link to it as well. But it, I think it's really interesting, this paper and how much it's we've seen it grow and being used this year. So what are you guys seeing in the office about that? You, you got yourself muted there. <laughs> yeah, I have to. I have to. The dog was barking. There was some noise here, so I had to turn it. I, and then I'm like trying to click it as fast as I can, and it's yeah. tiny. Um, in the, I mean, we. This, I mean, this sheet's been around. I think it was. Sorry, we both have dogs here. Yeah. Um, yeah. In different parts of the country. Um, so it's reality TV. Um, but what was I going to say? Um, it has to be. It wasn't this past IBIE, which was la last year. It was the year before. So that's like six years ago is the first time yeah. I had my hand on it. But we didn't um, we didn't bring it out right away because I couldn't figure out what to do with it. Um, but what I liked about it, I think it was Nancy Westfall. It's like, do you have a paper we can paint on? I want to do PYO dots. It was kind of funny that, you know, that that's how it came and everybody loves it for that. Um, but just letting it sit out in Vegas in that dry heat and then bringing it back. It sat on my counter for like a year, um, unopened, I mean, sorry, opened, sitting out and nothing ever did anything to it. Um, we also like that it tastes like nothing. So it does not interfere with what you're, what you're, uh, what you're creating either. Um, Julia says, I love to use it when I label on cookies, print on it and, and looked like a real label in the special 
special on the texture side. She likes the texture side. It sounds like yeah, she likes the texture side. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it's becoming more and more fa the favorite. Um, it also, this is really important. Um, we talked about this in a live more recently. Um, it was again, Stacy's live, but I think it was the one before this, um, yeah. Yeah. where these sheets do not have titanium dioxide in it. Correct. In Titanium dioxide, um, depending on the frosting you put it on after you print on it, um, it's in ice. It's in icing sheets, not a lot. But if you also have um, acids um, or like lemon juice or a lot of corn syrup um, on a sheet that has titanium dioxide, you may see some blurred on the images. You may see colors changing. Um, a lot depends on the image too. There's a ton of different factors, but titanium dioxide does it does affect it. And these sheets do not have it in there. So if yep. you are using an icing or a frosting that has certain, you know, the corn syrups in it um, or more titanium dioxide, and you're having that problem, switch over to the smart sheet and that should take care of that. Um, oh, Susan Trianos is on. We do, Susan, you missed it. We were talking about you and we tagged you. Look, look what um, we were talking about, Susan. Ta -da! <laughs> <laughs> So, so that's yeah, the smart sheets, yeah, the smart sheets are really uh, something a lot of people like, and we're going to move into something that somebody else has done with the smart sheets that's done some lives for us. But um, the smart sheets, again, you can use them for paint palettes, you can use them on cakes, you can use them on fondant, you know, you could do so many things with these smart sheets. Now, I want everybody to notice, I'm in Dallas, it's very dry right now, and it's like cardstock. Can you hear that? It's kind of like cardstock. But when we're in Florida, where it's really humid, they're very flexible. And if you want to make these flexible, if you're in a, an area that is really dry, you use our trusty paper potion on them. Okay? Um, and you can then you can fold them just like a ribbon or a fan. I mean, you can do all kinds of things with these things. They're kind of cool. And you can Now, what is paper potion, my dear? So paper potion, oh, we all talk about this and a lot, almost everybody uses it. I keep bumping the camera here. Ooh, sorry. Um, the paper potion is a conditioner that we use and, and IC Images makes it. And it's a conditioner for edible paper. And we use it on the smart sheets. Um, we use it on flex frost. We use it on wafer paper. Um, and particularly our wafer paper or smart sheets, when you use it on there, it allows the paper to become flexible enough that you can manipulate it um, in such a way that you normally could not do with the paper itself. Because if I were to manipulate this right now, I'm just going to crack it right in half because it's very dry. If I spray the paper potion on it, it becomes flexible enough that I would be able to manipulate this and even make it into a bow or whatever, or, you know, ruffle or whatever. So that's what we use the paper. Does the, does the smart sheet actually crack like wafer or is it more durable? It's more durable, but it, it, in here in Dallas, especially this time of year, it reminds me of cardstock paper. So you know how you fold cardstock and it gets a crease in it and sometimes it might rip a little bit. That's how it acts like here right now. In the summer, when it's more humid here, it's more it not as flexible as what we see when we're in Florida, um, but it becomes the smart sheet becomes more malleable right out of the package. But right now, if I were to get it out of the package, it's just like this. It's almost like cardstock. So, and it it works great on cakes. I use it all the time. So we were talking about this to Zentrianos, and we told them if they want this cutter and this image they could get it from you so thanks for coming up with that idea um, another thing that has happened with the smart sheets this year is we have a person that comes on to our lives a lot now this is my interpretation of it okay this is not becky's interpretation it's becky norton and becky norton uses smart sheets a lot and she runs them through a Skizix machine. I think that's what it's called. And to make the texture on the cookie. So instead of using royal icing on the cookie and putting the crinkled up parchment paper or the patterned parchment paper that people are buying um, and sticking it on there and it being 
you know, a lot of royal icing and it may or may not come out the way you want it to come out because I've seen some of that not come out. She uses the smart sheet and runs it through the Sizzik machine with, with one of the, um, what are they called? The spell binder molds or whatever you, you guys used to sell. Yeah. yeah. There's, we, we actually sold sweet accents for a long time. We have food safe dyes and such that are on our website, exceptionally inexpensive, um, so she, Sizzix also makes them. There's a ton of companies that make them. Um, and she, Becky loves the embossing folders. That's her favorite. Hey, Jesse Ann, yeah. um, do me a favor and, and pick those up because oh, I'm going them. to, yeah, I'm going to. So yeah. see how they're embossed. So pretty. All right. And then Becky also introduced us to these blender brushes. This was kind of fun. And we, these I actually did with our um, bling highlighters. So these are our bling highlighters, um, which Icing Images has. And there's gold, uh, there's silver, and there's rose gold or a pink. Comes in a package like that. And the, the bling highlighters, how the, or the little, blender brushes, how they work. And you can get those at icing images too. You tap them into the um, color of highlighter that you want, and then you rub it gently over the surface. And that's what gives you the gold on here. So you can see on this one, I did the pattern on this one too. And can you see the gold awesome. accent on there? That is so pretty, the detail that's on it. I'm yeah. trying to keep up with you with the links that you're going after. Yeah. So, <laughs> so these, were, these are cookies. These, these are cookies. And so the way we did those is we just made the cookie and I made a hole in the cookie and I used some semi isomol to attach my wire on the back. God, I love these that semi isomol. That's right. That's another thing a lot of people use. So you can do it this way or you can do it like I did here where I baked it in the cookie. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, but I made ornaments out of these and these are you know, using that technique where we use the um, smart sheet and attach it. The other thing Becky Norton likes to do is royalizing transfers. Woohoo! Look at there. We have all kinds of royalizing transfers that can be done, including this big giant one that we did for a cookie. This is a taco. <laughs> So really? this is the royal icing top. This is a royal icing transfer we did. And again, you use your acetate, and this was printed on the blue printer. That is so cool. I love that's probably one of my favorite things um, yep. on the blue yep. that you all do. It, it it just kind of blows me away how much you can do. I mean, and how easy it is. Like, because you print on them when they're wet, right? Yep, we do. So we print the pattern first. Or, our, or it's also known as a template. We print our template first, we lay the acetate down, and then we pipe our royal icing right on top of the acetate, and then we go back over it and print right on it while it's wet. And they just are beautiful when they come out. And you can do any size. I saw some that Becky did, and they were very large. I mean, this one's pretty big comparison. You know, that's, that's a three inch cookie. So this, this taco is three inches wide. Um, but these are smaller, these are a little smaller ones, but I know Becky has done some really, really big ones. So they yeah, Becky says, it. yeah, Becky says, uh, talk about your transfer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we were doing a set of cookies, uh, with tacos. So obviously I mean, I just was having fun and I made some Royal Icing transfers. So, and this has been around for a while now. This is hard. This was about four weeks ago. I made this. So they dry, you could make them, I know Becky talked about making them really small and making your own sprinkle mixes. Um, that's something yeah. you can do, which is really cool. All right, then you the other thing. Um, oops, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, you can't um, save a real taco for- No, days. no, you can save Yeah, but your blender brushes, you, they're very, very soft. They come um, in a set. I have a set here. So I have a set here and they come in the set. So you, and you use whatever color goes with the color family you're working on. 
And they also, you have a little stand for them too, I think, don't you? Deb? Yeah, we did. A stand yeah. and they have caps. They're really yeah. nice. And they have, yeah, a little cap and everything. So um, I thought that was, you know, that was something that we saw used quite a bit. So, and the bling highlighter, highlighter everybody used a lot of bling highlighter and stuff this year too. Um, and it added to, I know Stacy just used it last week. And it, we couldn't believe how just a teeny tiny bit made such a difference in um his cookies hey lori hey lori yeah. um hey, <laughs> so there are a lot of dust out there and we only talk about the edible ones the ones that are truly edible not just yep. food safe okay. um what it makes those bling highlighters i guess different than typical dust because these are highlighters as opposed to dust yeah so the the difference between them is and i'll open this one so you can see of course i pulled out the package that's not open ha, ha, ha. i have two packages of these and i pulled out the one that's not open let me open it ha, ha. we wanted to open it didn't we now it looks like a tiny container but that stuff goes a long way yeah that's why i got two of them is i thought oh it's not going to go very far and i haven't I haven't had to open the second one um, at all. And I really got it because I thought I was going to have to open or use a lot. But can you see how shiny that is? And it's really oh, yeah. fine powder. Use the end of my paintbrush. Really fine powder. So it's more of a powder than a than like the yeah. dust? Yeah, the dusts are kind of, you know, bigger particles. And this is really fine. You can see it on my paintbrush. Look how shimmery it is. You could use some uh, paper potion and mix it with this and use it as paint. And that's what, you know, uh, some people do with it. So that's really, and the other thing is this is truly edible. So you really have to be careful on that because a lot of people will say their stuff is edible and it's not. I mean, we see that a lot in our industry. It's really sad when we see that. And people believe that it is edible and it's not. And, you know, that's, it's just not good. Yeah. If you're buying product from us, it is edible. It's not yeah. just food safe. It's edible. Yeah, it is edible. So that I think is really, really important that we, you know, differentiate that between that. Now, the other thing that we saw a lot of people do, and I use that technique on this one too, is these are, this is wafer paper. Okay. Oh, wow. This is wafer paper and also are the leaves. So what I did is I used a paper punch and Jesse and Riley uh, was showing us how we could use paper punches. And um, so did Becky and so did several other people this year. Uh, when I went back and looked, I saw it multiple times where people were using paint, you know, uh, punches and punching out the shapes. So this one, I, uh, colored my paper, my wafer paper, and then I just punched it out after it dried with a paper punch, a craft punch. And then um, I sprayed, I flipped it over and I sprayed again our good old paper potion on it. Yeah. To make it curl up a little bit and to stick on my ornament. So, because I wanted all the ornaments to have something similar. So, you know, that's a lot of the stuff that we're seeing that people use. Then the other thing that I saw, and I did not have time to make it this year, but uh, when we go back and review, if you go back and look at some of the things that Jesse Ann Riley showed us, she was using wafer paper and making it into tea bags and then making it into candy that you could eat. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I was just like flabbergasted with that because nobody had ever done that before. But that's one of the things that Becky, or not Becky, um, Jesse and Riley does for us is she always comes up with these really creative ideas. And so she took wafer paper, made it into a tea bag. Um, she actually put like lemonade in it, not just tea. So she also did like lemonade in one. And then after you dipped it, you saved your your little tea bag thing and then you fried it and it turned it into hard candy. So that was at at uh, Halloween. So if you want to see yep. Jesse and Riley dressed up as a cat, go back to Halloween. 
because that was really a really good cat. Yeah, she did make a really, really good cat. So that was some of the fun things that I found quickly as I was looking at what we were doing this year.